Well, hello there, everybody, and welcome back to the Battle of Saratoga. I want to thank everybody for all of the likes and views on the last video. It really seems like you guys are enjoying this Let's Play, and we're going to try to bring you more and more as time goes on. We've also got an exciting Let's Play coming on Wednesday, which is just going to just shock you guys. It's actually going to be a naval battle in Pike and Shot, and I think you guys are going to be really amazed at what we've managed to do. So we're going to go ahead and turn this over to the Patriots. We've done our turn already. If you haven't seen that turn, make sure to check out the first video. I'm going to leave a link down below, although honestly, it's the last video we put up on the channel, so you shouldn't have any trouble finding it. Let's see what the Patriots are going to do here. All right, so some nasty shots there. And of course, we've got a melee phase on the far right. As you can see, we're trying to take out the Connecticut militia. And the King's Loyal Americans, the Loyalists on our side, are doing a pretty good job at holding up their own end of the fight. But it's now the Patriots' turn, and we have to see if they're going to move forward on us. As you can see, another skirmisher unit here. So there we go, they've disrupted our unit. I was worried about that, some tremendous artillery shots. And this is one of the reasons why the uh, Patriots actually won the Battle of Saratoga, is that immense artillery that they had. In this war, one cannon could make a major difference. And in this particular battle, the cannons were extremely important. So as you can see, we've got the Connecticut Light Horse Reserves coming over. Now we've got our own cavalry units that just came onto the battlefield, but I don't think they're gonna be able to get over here very quickly. All right, guys, the melee phase. Let's see if we can break some Patriots. And actually, we just got three pounders from the baggage train. These are three pound cannons, but quite frankly, at this point in the battlefield, or in po this point of the battle, I should say, I don't see these making a huge bit of difference. It's gonna take forever to bring them forward. And I was really hoping for some better reinforcements. There we go. And our unit has rallied, very good. So we're gonna continue the attack. And it looks like our King's Loyal Americans are doing our, their absolute best to break the Patriot morale here. Now, you guys know what we're trying to do with these Grenadiers. We're trying to get them close enough to charge the militia units. So we're going to bring the British Grenadier unit up. And, of course, these are very well-trained British soldiers. We're going to go ahead and open fire. We're very, very close. But there's a cover modifier since they're in the woods. See if we can do some damage to them. At the same time, I'm going to bring in the 24th Foot Regiment and see if I can fire again and just break up these militia units. I think that's gonna be the key to victory here. If there is a key to victory, it's going to be to break the enemy morale by destroying their militia units. So we're gonna turn and open fire once again at the Connecticut militia with the Brunswick Chasseurs. Really nice shots. And you can see that those light infantry units know how to shoot and they know how to shoot well. So we've got Dearborn's light infantry right here and we would actually possibly win in a charge here. So we're gonna charge. Uh, now, they're probably going to evade, and now we're in a nasty position. We did catch up to them, though, and got a rear attack, and that is going to fragment them. Very good news. The bad news is, look at this hill right here. This is a perfect opportunity for the enemy to blow us away. The good news is they can't fire on us while we're engaged in melee combat, but they could certainly follow up with melee combat and melee attacks of their own. So I think we need to keep moving up more Grenadier battalions. Like I told you guys, this battlefield is so well defended by the Patriots. I'm thinking that our best chance is to break up these guys on top of the hill. So yes, we're probably gonna be attacking on top of a hill, which isn't the greatest situation in the world, but we don't really have much of a choice. Let's go ahead and move forward with our Queen's Loyal Rangers. In fact, we could bring them over here, which is what I think I'm going to do. Get them out from that open field and get them over here on the right side of the battlefield. We'll also keep moving our cannons up. But like I said, these six-pounders, I don't see them arriving in time to really help us at all. Um, so now we need to focus our shots over here on Morgan's Riflemen. Um, now I could charge, and we'd actually probably do okay, but I think I'm just going to focus on rifle fire. There we go, they're gonna return fire. Nasty return fire there. I'm also going to, oh, we can't turn here and not in these woods. Now we're gonna to have to get dangerously close to the enemy cavalry to make a move. I'm gonna do it though, we're gonna move. Of course the enemy cavalry's got rifles, we'll fire at them. And these Connecticut cavalry are gonna be a pain to the very end. So I'm gonna move forward with the British 62nd Foot Regiment. Unfortunately, our line of sight is blocked by the Brunswick Jaeger Company. So we're gonna move them back because a light infantry division facing 
uh, you know, an enemy cavalry division, it's not going to be pretty. I mean, it's not going to be pretty no matter what we do, but this will be slightly better for us. Fire on Morgan's riflemen there. Of course, they're going to return fire. The enemy's got a very nice position right here, but we're going to keep on firing at the enemy light horse reserves. They're really the ones I'm concerned about. I'm also concerned about the Massachusetts Regiment. These are actually Patriot infantry units. They're not just militia. So we've got to be very careful fighting them. Um, these guys are going to fight, and they're going to fight very hard. So let's see. Can we get a shot off on anybody? I think we can. Fortunately, we're going to take hits to do it. But we've got to try something new. Also going to move in our Native American friends. And they might be able to go ahead and throw some uh, shots down on the enemy as well. So there we go. We have been revealed, and we've got a nice group of units here, but they're not exactly in the best location. I'm also going to keep pushing up our cannons. Keep hoping for the best, of course, but I'm so worried that these cannons are going to show up to the battlefield way too late. Now let's bring up our Prince Ludwig Dragoons, and we're going to be using them over here on the enemy's right flank. I think this is going to be the most effective place to use them, despite the fact that the enemy's got some incredible fortifications here. I think we've got enough men to break those fortifications, and that's a big, big if, guys, because if we fail over here, the amount of losses we're going to take is going to be absolutely tremendous. So I'm going to move some of our British 24th Foot Regiment over here to face the enemy. We're also going to use Von Speck's Brigade, and I'm going to see if we could charge here and get a decent attack. It actually looks like it wouldn't be too bad, but I think I'm just going to focus on opening fire on them. Try to get some casualties this way, and if we get an attack from this side and do okay, maybe we'll go for it. But I think once again, I'm going to focus fire on the Albany Militia, and actually here I am going to charge. Now they're going to evade for sure. And this puts us in a scary position because now they're evading. Uh, you know, we're open for shots from up here at Bemis Heights, the Patriot camp. And we don't want to be shot at from that location, as you can imagine. So let's turn towards the Massachusetts Regiment here. Open fire. See if we can't break them. Now our Brunswick Chasseurs, they're already disrupted. And I don't want them to lose heart. So I'm actually going to move them over here. And they can get a shot off on the Duchess of Ulster's militia. Unfortunately, if we fire here, we're kind of off target. We're not facing them. So we're not going to get nearly as good of a shot as we would otherwise. But we've got to take what we can get. So we're just going to make sure we've moved all of our units. And I think we have. We might have one more down here. That's right. The British Three Pounders. But like I said, the chances of them getting to the battle on time are very, very small. Let's take a look. And I think we're going to go ahead and end the turn. Hope for the best, guys, and turn it over to the Patriots once again. It's amazing they can still hit us, even with all that woods cover. And here we go, guys. We managed to break the light infantry unit. This is good news for us. Now our men are going to charge up that hill. That's not necessarily good news. All right, let's see what happens here. And let's see if we could break this militia unit as well. Unfortunately, it looks like they're holding tight. And I think it's because of all of the woods cover. It's actually much harder even to have a melee fight with all those trees around. Okay, they've disrupted our unit, Morgan's men. We managed to disrupt them too, but we knew we were going to face a nasty fight with these guys. And here we go, the enemy's opening fire on our Grenadiers, but we got some very good return fire there. And like I told you guys, I knew that Von Rett's regiment was going to be an open target. Unfortunately, he chased the enemy unit. Maybe we shouldn't have chased that enemy unit. In the meantime, though, we could start moving up on that left flank. Oh, boy. I see what I'm worried about. Flank shots on the British Light Infantry Battalion. Not the greatest position at all. We've got some more Patriots trying to fight our Hessian, uh, our Brunswickian and Hessian mercenaries right now. And a lot of our units here in this front line are disrupted. All right, residual shooting phase, guys. Melee phase. Can we break them? Very minor casualties on the enemy side, to be honest with you. 
and it is our turn once again. Now, we've wanted to charge these units forever. Now our Grenadiers get a chance at charging, but look at this. We actually have a high chance to draw, but I still think it's worth the attack. I think they're just going to evade. Sure enough, that's exactly what they're doing. We're not going to be getting that wonderful shot we were looking for, that rear flank attack. But we can go ahead and open fire with our three pounders. And unfortunately, no real damage there. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start moving forward against the enemy on the hill. Obviously, they're going to return fire here. We really need to react quickly. So let's go ahead and fire at the New Hampshire Regiment. And if we're going to fire at the New Hampshire Regiment, we really need to focus our fire in that direction with every single regiment we have. Unfortunately, that's not going to be possible in all instances here. So let's turn towards them with our British Light Infantry and open fire on Poor's Brigade. Pretty nice shot there, but the return fire is horrific. And as you can see, I'm thinking going up this hill, there's no chance of victory for us there. We're going to have to try and bypass that issue and just stay back and open fire from here. Let's hope, though, that this second Connecticut militia will finally retreat. And we can't forget that we've got some grenadiers here that might be able to join the fight. So let's see. I think they can. And here we go. We're going to attack the Connecticut militia. 16 down, and we broke them, guys, with the Brunswick grenadiers. Now, of course, our men are going to be moving into position, but they're also going to be chasing the enemy. This could go either really well or really poorly for us, because now at least our men are kind of in a symmetrical position with the enemy forces on top of the hill. So we might be able to get some pretty decent shots off on them. But once again, let's try to move up our poor Hessian artillery, six pounders, taking forever for these guys to get to the battlefield. And same thing with our British six pounders. But we must keep trying. Okay, guys, our Brunswick Dragoons are approaching. And I'm thinking that if we can get them close enough and charge that position, we're going to be a lot better off for it. But that's a big if. So one thing I'm going to do is I think... Let me see really quickly. I think with these British Limbers, we might be able to get them into position to start firing um, over there at the enemy where the 13th Massachusetts is. If we can, it's going to work out pretty well for us. If we can't, obviously we're in a bit of trouble. So there we go, firing on the on these boys. We're also going to charge this unit. And once again, they're going to evade. The evading here is too much for me uh, because the Patriots, you know, just like in the real Revolutionary War, they seem to be very, very good at firing and retreating. Very, very much like your average skirmisher unit. And ultimately, that's going to really hurt us. So we're going to keep putting the damage there on the 1st Massachusetts, see if we can break it. I'll bring forward our 20th Foot Regiment. Although I don't think they're going to be able to fire this turn. At least we're getting them into position to soon start firing. And let's make sure we've got the rest of our men up. Let's go ahead and move these guys up as well. And let's make sure we don't have any other unmoved men. Okay, so we've got our British 9th Foot Regiment here. Let's fire at the Massachusetts boys. And over here, I think since we've got these guys basically up against the water, it's probably in our best interest to charge Morgans. And we actually got a rear attack on them. Beautiful. And we broke Morgans Riflemen, guys. So once again, not so bad at all. But now, of course, we're out of the woods once again. We're going to be completely open to all the regiments up here on Bemis Heights. And that's not going to look very good for us. Of course, we have another unit here that's disrupted. I really would like to break these guys. So I'm going to see if we can't move up one turn. Unfortunately, we're already getting shot at. I wanted to see if we could turn and fire. And I think we can and try to break the light horse reserves. Keep it up, boys. All right. It's not looking great. But at the same time, we're doing a lot better than I originally thought we would. So, of course, now we're going to turn it over to the Patriots. See what, what tricks they have up their sleeve to... Uh, to fight back against us. And I'm just hoping for the absolute best here, my friends. So let's try not to get too close to Bemis Heights and let's hope that these disrupted units reform pretty quickly. Although it's good to see that us chasing away Morgan's Riflemen has scared the hell out of the Connecticut Light Horse Reserves. Of course, now our poor 21st Foot Regiment is going to be open to fire big time from Bemis Heights and I don't think it's going to be very pretty for them. Let's end the turn.
absolutely fragmented our units here. We're still out in the open, but we're getting closer to that left flank, and I think that's what matters. Okay, so two Patriot, three Patriot forces routing, uh, but now it's the Patriot turn. Let's see what they do to us from Bemis Heights. And of course, they're going to start opening fire on our Grenadiers. I think this time we can actually catch them, though. That's it. Our Hessian mercenaries are doing an okay job. In many ways, they've got a little bit more morale than, than our British units do. Keep it up, lads. And there we go, fragmented and auto breaks. I'm not surprised at all. Like I said, guys, once we get up on that hill, it's just a death trap. And of course, they're fragmenting both of our units here in the front. We might even want to pull these guys back, but let's see what sort of return fire we get here. And the melee phase. All right, so of course our men dis dispersed immediately. They didn't even want to continue the fight. They literally just dropped their guns and ran off the battlefield. So I am going to try to charge again with the Grenadiers. And now that the enemy's stuck, they're going to go right off the map. Uh, of course, we, they evaded. They jumped off the map. I think that's going to work out pretty well for us. Now we need to focus on this hill here. And the fact that the enemy has a unit running through this area on top of the hill, just terrified, might serve us well. I say might because we really don't know 100% uh, if that's the case. So I'm going to try to target one of the enemy regiments here. We'll target Poor's Brigade. We're going to do the same with Fraser's Rangers. And we're going to do the same with the King's Loyal Americans. I'm going to move them up actually a bit closer here. Let's move up our Queen's Loyal Rangers over here and keep firing at this unit. And hopefully enough firepower will break this guy until he is not willing to fight anymore. There we go, disrupted. And 13 shots from the Brunswick Chasseurs. There's a reason I like that unit so much. And that's the reason. They are just excellent in the battlefield at, um, at firing. Unfortunately, I expected to get a shot off on these guys, and it doesn't look like that's going to happen. We've got no line of sight, so we're going to have to settle for firing at the brigade that's retreating right now, the 2nd Connecticut Militia. At least we'll make sure they don't return to the battlefield. All right, boys and girls, here we go. Move forward with our cannons as well. And we'll keep trying to move forward with our British six-pounders here. Actually, they're Hessian six-pounders, uh, not British. Keep on moving forward. Now, what I'm really concerned about are these fragmented troops, but there's nowhere for them to go. So I'm thinking we need to try and take out the most dangerous unit, which is the 2nd Massachusetts. And we're definitely going to take some fire in return, as you can see there, but we'll keep shooting fire with our Native American artillery. Let's turn right here and open fire at the Connecticut Light Horse Reserves. And we'll also open fire at these Light Horse Reserves. I hope we get a little luckier with them. I'm even going to turn here and open fire from the rear. But as you can see, their shots are just going to mess us up. And one benefit of turning this way is we can hopefully run away uh, when we get hit. But I'm pretty sure that <laughs> they're, they're going to be knocked out before they even have a chance to run away. So here we go. We could once again try to go ahead and charge the enemy here. And I'm starting to think we may need to. Um, but what we'll do right now is we'll just keep on firing. And we'll even get a little closer here with our men. Even if we get shot at, I think it's important to get as close as possible. Because if we're going to charge this area, we need to do it right. So let's open fire here once again at the 1st Massachusetts. And they're disrupted. Very good news for us, guys. We're going to keep moving forward with our uh, Prince Ludwig Dragoons. And of course, since they are Dragoons, they do have rifles. Four, not bad. Let's keep moving forward. And at some point, we're going to deploy this Hessian artillery. This would be the perfect time to deploy. So I'm going to go ahead and unlimber the battery. I hope we're close enough to get a shot next turn. But in the meantime, we'll just start moving our units up. We'll do the same with the British three-pounders back here. And hope to get in range before the end of the fight here.
Okay, so we can definitely open fire. Nice shooting. And of course, on this side, they don't have those fortifications to defend them. At the same time, the enemy can get some really great flanking shots on our men, and nobody's happy about that. Um, so, once again, these guys are disrupted. I feel like we need to go for the charge, because at least then the, en the enemy won't be able to fire at us if we catch up to them. But if they retreat and get away from us, we're in some serious trouble. So there we go. We did manage to impact. We did get into close combat. That's good news for us, at least temporarily. And of course, we'll keep moving forward with our six-pounder artillery, hoping for the absolute best here, my friends. And we're going to turn it over to the Patriots here uh, pretty soon to see what their response is going to be. But you guys know how this works. Uh, we're going to go ahead and end the turn here. Of course, if you guys want to see more of this Let's Play, make sure to hit that like button. Subscribe to our channel. Uh, make sure to check out the first part of this video so that you get some understanding of what we're going through. I want to remind you guys that we are playing on the hardest mode available, Captain General mode. So it's going to be pretty tough uh, to actually be able to win this game. That's for sure. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Take care and have an awesome, awesome day.